Hey, it's Amy with Greater Than Ruby's Television, the place for you to come to get tips, resources, and have discussions on how to live your very best life possible for Christ. So, I don't know about your week, but mine has been pretty terrible. So, thus the late video. How has your week been? Maybe it's been way better than mine, or maybe it's been way worse than mine. Basically, I'm just whining. But I want to read something that I wrote for um, last week. I did a, just a little Sabbath school or pre-Sabbath school lesson. For those of you who aren't Adventist, Sabbath school is pretty much just like Sunday school. But anyway, I wrote something about the mediocre Christian life and how to have one. Because, um, I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm... I'm heading there myself, like I don't have enough motivation or enough drive, or I don't know God well enough to really um, make to know that I'm following His path for me. So, with that in mind, I want you to know this is for me, for my heart. And if it steps on your toes, well, it stepped on mine first, and um, and I don't know. I thought maybe you'd enjoy this. So, here you go. This is um, five simple principles for a mediocre Christian life. Accept what society has pitched to you about living the good life. Surround yourself with people who think just like you. Get married, stay close to home, get a normal job, do things the way everyone else does. Talk about clothes and other people's problems. Say, praise the Lord and God is good a lot, but don't follow God too far outside your comfort zone. Okay, here are the principles. Number one, when it comes to education, go to college right after high school because someone told you you'd make more money with a degree, not because you're passionate about learning anything. Take four years to finish and follow all the classes in your course catalog, even if you hate everything you're studying. Focus on grades so hard that you're exhausted on Sabbath and you need to skip Sabbath school to sleep in. After all, this is just a temporary four-year sacrifice. God surely understands that you don't want to hang out with him, right? Grades have to be priority now, don't they? Number two, stewardship. When it comes to stewardship, spend most of your money on yourself. Be fashionable, of course, and buy a house as soon as you can because you're supposed to. Fill it with a plasma TV and cute furniture and art to impress your friends when they, came, when they come over. Buy a nice new car and complain regularly about the cost of gas. Spend all you earn, or maybe more than you earn some months. On occasion, give money to church projects and charity causes. Cry real tears when you watch those beautiful, moving Adventist Frontier Mission testimonies. But re remember not to give sacrificially because God will provide for all their needs after all. Number three, when it comes to service, go overseas to somewhere really hip once or twice in your life. Somewhere safe and English speaking. Make sure that even when on mission trips you stay fairly safe and comfortable. McDonald's is now in 119 countries. So there will always be tasty things to eat, but careful when you drink the water. If you're doing long-term service projects, make sure to snap a couple pictures of you with the orphans looking humble and well-loved. Make sure that above anything else you get those photos so that secretly people will think well of you. When it comes to a career, Sure, God needs people in every industry, but for you, make sure you can make a good living. Aim to get a secure job that you may or may not care about and work it faithfully for most of your professional life. Sit at a desk for 40 hours a week, whether or not you're doing something important. Attend useless meetings. Take credit for the things that go well. But nonchalantly make sure that everyone knows it wasn't you when things don't go your way. Avoid looking like a fool at all costs, especially when it comes to sharing your faith. Don't do that at work. 
Don't even try to think about actually planning your life around your faith. That's just silly. When you dream of doing something that makes your pulse race, something so big that it just might change the world, or bring souls to Christ, or help you fully achieve what God set out for you, just shrug it off. Take a few deep breaths and massage the area. It's like a Charlie horse. It'll go away. When it comes to decision making, don't question earthly authority. It's there for good reason. Feel threatened by new ideas and never, ever be the voice of dissent. Consult with friends, mentors, and even your pastor when it comes to making big decisions in life. But don't actually pray about it. Or, if you do, make sure it's just for a few minutes at a time. You definitely don't want to go over an hour. Because, after all, that whole seek ye first thing, that's just a metaphor. Remember the two most important questions in determining God's will. How hard is it? And do we have the money? If you go through life following these simple principles I've outlined for you, you'll find yourself in very good company with virtually everyone who lives an unremarkable Christian life. Well, what more could you want? <laughs> I hope you want more than that, because I do. So basically do exactly the opposite of what I've just read to you, and you'll be well on your way to achieving a successful Christian life. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week when hopefully I am feeling less depressed about my own life and more sure in the path that God set out for me. If you've got any comments or you want to share your week with me, feel free to email, Facebook, or even put the comments below. Thanks. See you later. Bye.